now we move on to A Course in Miracles Workbook Lesson 138. Lesson 138 says, Heaven is the decision I must make. Now, I've just given you an analogy. The blue sky, gently the clouds come in, clouds of thoughts. More and more clouds come in until the sky is no longer seen, no more blue, just a blanket of gray and cloudy white, gray and white clouds everywhere. Eventually, the clouds compress until they're thick, thick clouds. It goes, seems to go dark because the sun is now hidden behind the clouds. The sun is still there. And as the clouds intensify, next thing you hear the thunder. These are thoughts clashing with each other, wrong-minded thoughts clashing. Thoughts of the past, thoughts of suffering, thoughts of separation, anxiety, fear, guilt, sin. And with the friction of the clouds rubbing together, lightning strike, lightning strike, pain. Pain enters the body-mind perception. Focus on the lightning and all you see is the shards of sparks of, of pain shooting through the clouds created by the clouds themselves the myriad of thoughts that that preoccupy our minds what do we do we return to silence as you return to silence it's like you it's like someone grabs a canvas and removes the clouds and the blue sky is once again the canvas of the awareness is once again in our awareness itself and then we see the radiance of the sun the sun the sun's mind is lit. The Christ mind, the sun, remembers himself because the clouds are gone. They were never real. The lightning, the pain is gone. And so heaven is a decision we must make. We need to choose to be ourselves knowingly. We need to choose to be the Christ we are. We cannot, as body minds, remember God, but we can remember the self, awaken to ourself. The self, which is the dreamer, awake the dreamer is the Christ, that which is the sonship of God. And when we be ourself knowingly, when we remember ourselves and become ourselves knowingly, that very essence is the essence of God. And in knowing our essence, we remember God. In this world, heaven is a choice because here in the appearance of here we believe that there are alternatives to choose between we think that all things have opposites have an opposite and what we want we choose if heaven exists there must be a hell as well what a lie for contradiction is the way we make what we perceive we make what we perceive we make manifest illusions. And what we think then becomes real for us. Creation, which is God's creation, which is God's extension of himself, the extension of God's essence, the extension of light, the extension of love itself, knows no opposite. But here, in this dream state, lo we are localizations, the appearances of localizations in the dreaming mind. But here is... Opposition out of being real, this seems to be real. It is the strange perception of the truth that makes the choice of heaven seem to be the same as the relinquishment of hell. It is not really thus. It seems to, but it's not. Yet what is true in God's creation cannot enter here, can't enter the dreaming mind until it is reflected in some form the world can understand. Truth cannot come where it can only be perceived with fear. Dreaming mind is a mind filled with fear. It's why it's dreaming. But this would be the error. Truth can brought illusions. Opposition can make the truth unwelcome, and it cannot come. Opposition, conflicting thoughts. Choice is the obvious escape from what appears as opposites. Right, good, bad, light, darkness. Decisions lets one of conflicting goals become the aim. One of the conflicting goals become the aim of effort and expenditure of time. Like I said, you can't make time. You can use it, though. You can spend it. 
without decision. Time is but a waste and effort dissipated. Effort is the self-same essence being shared. It is spent for nothing in return. Time goes by without results. And that's the use of time to be used to remember thyself. There is no sense of gain. For nothing is accomplished, nothing learned. And that's the life of the percent of the world. Following each day in in a rigorous pattern of forgetfulness. You need to be reminded that you think a thousand choices are confronting you when there really is only one to make. And even this seems to be a choice. Only seems to be a choice. Inevitably, you will end there. Not confuse yourself with all the doubts that myriad decisions would induce. You make one. And when that one is made, you will perceive it was no choice at all. It is a natural progression to the self-realization of the self we truly are, the self which is the shared being with God. For truth is true. Nothing else is true. God is true, and nothing but God is true. Love is true. Nothing but love is true. Close as we get to non-judgment, the acceptance of what is, abide in silent stillness, offer gratitude. There is no opposites to choose instead. There is no contradiction to the truth. And when you have lots of explanations for the truth, it's not true. Truth is simple. Be still and know I am. Choosing depends on learning, and learning is just remembering. We don't learn anything new. We remember what we've always known and always are. Knowing and having is and being are one and the same. And the truth cannot be learned, but only recognized. So what appears to be teaching and learning is just the unveiling of what is not true. We remember what we are through the experience of what we're not, the neti neti in Advita. In recognition, is its acceptance lies. In recognition, that's what understanding means. You recognize what you've always been. As it is accepted, it is known by what? By the self which knows itself as that, which is the extension of God's love. Body mind by now has dissolved and gone silent. If you're still abiding, if you're still alive, the body mind just resigns. It just goes quiet and the self takes over. But knowledge is beyond our goals we seek to teach within this framework of this course because we cannot know the knowing of ourselves. We can prepare ourselves for it. God takes the final step. All we need to do is abide in silent stillness, give gratitude. And you can only abide in silent stillness with no thoughts interrupting you when all forgiveness is done. All forgiveness is the, prepare, is the preparation for the silent stillness. Our teaching goals be attained through learning how to reach them, what they are, and what they are for you. Decisions of the outcome of your learning. Learn correctly, and the, the outcome is awakening to self. Learn incorrectly, and you get trapped in the ideas of the world. For they rest on what you have accepted as the truth of what you are. Either you recognize you're the Holy Son of God, or you recognize you're a pawn in a puzzle, and there's someone that's going to come save you, and there's a God outside you, or you don't believe in God at all, or you believe in materialism or whatever it is that you do. And now you're trapped in all of this nonsense and it will become a self-fulfilling prophecy for you. And whatever you believe you will go look for, and it will reaffirm itself in you because you go look for proof in illusions and illusions can offer proof to that, which isn't real an illusion itself. Remember knowledge is beyond the goals. We seek to teach within this framework of this course where we teach is forgiveness, abidance, gratitude, be thyself knowingly. Instruction Jesus gave 2,000 years ago. In this insanely complicated world, heaven appears to take the form of choice rather than being, than merely being what it is. It is what you are. You are the kingdom in which God resides and abides eternally here now. God extended himself and created the sonship. He abides in his sonship. The sonship is heaven. 
the kingdom is the sonship. What are you? One of the sons asleep dreaming of separation. Of all the choices you have tried to make, this is the simplest, most definitive, and prototype of all the rest, the one which settles all decisions. If you could decide the rest, this one remains unsolved. That's the way of psychology and science, trying to figure it all out. When you solve this one, the others are resolved with it because then you realize there's no matter. It's just an appearance thereof. For all decisions, but conceal this one by taking different forms and appearing as matter, people, places, things, and events. Here is the final and only choice in which, which, in which, in which is the truth accepted or denied. But we begin today considering the choice that time was made to help us make the purpose of time. Such is its holy purpose, now transformed from the intent you gave it, the intent of dreaming a dream of separation, dreaming a dream where you thought you could replicate God's joy, replicate God's heavenly being in your dream state. And you, we failed. We, the I, asleep, failed. And this is what the ego believes that this dream be a means of demonstrating hell is real. It thought it was going to turn it into heaven. It turned it into hell. Why? It immediately made it from a mind in fear, and so it could only create a fearful projection of itself. Hope changes to despair, and life itself must, in the end, be overcome by death. Nothing dies. And death alone are opposites resolved. That's the way of the mind. So it looks forward to death, especially when it's suffering pain or suffering the illusion of pain. For ending opposition is to die to the illusionary mind. And thus salvation must be seen as death to a mind that dreams. For life is seen as conflict. And boy, is life in this delusion conflicting. To resolve the conflict for the dreaming mind end your life as well because how else do you end conflict unless you end the dream <laughs> that's the way of the dreaming mind that's the way of illusions these mad beliefs can gain unconscious hold of great intensity and people suffer get sick suffer pain and grip the mind with terror and anxiety, what's the common disease today? Everybody's suffering from anxiety. Everybody's got ADHD or some form of mental illness going. Why? A mental illness is a mind filled with mental ideas, mad ideas of separation. So and grip the mind with terror and anxiety so strong that it will not relinquish its ideas. What is an idea? A cluster of thoughts put together, strung out into a concept about its own projection. It must be saved from salvation. Oh, no, I don't want salvation because then I'm going to be dissolved and I'll never exist again. And like I've said before, we don't just fear death. The thing we fear the most is never having existed at all as this. And that's why we love the idea that this, this dies, the spirit returns to the spirit world. Ooh, we love that. So something carries on. That spirit world is just as much an illusion as this physical world. That spirit world listening to annoying angel music before you know it, you want to incarnate again. And you're back here with the same mindset you left. You won't remember it because you don't remember your last life. And those that do have glimpses of their previous lives and get trapped in fantasies. And all of it's just one big bullshit story of the ego mind. <laughs> These mad beliefs, I'm reading this again, and gain unconscious hold of great intensity and grip the mind with terror and anxiety so strong that it will, it will not relinquish its ideas about its own projection. And it won't even believe it's a projection. It'll believe it got plonked on this planet by God who's now got a book, a tablet, and he's watching you every naughty move. He's going to punish you when you go to, go to the gates and St. Peter's got his tablet there and he's going to dial in and go, what's your name? What's your ID number? Zap, go straight to hell, don't pass, go, don't collect $200, burn for eternity. <laughs> this is bizarre. Who thought up that shit? It must be saved from salvation. Oh, let me not be saved. Threat me to be safe and magically armored against the truth. And hence it makes up a myriad of belief systems. Do you realize the truth requires no belief? 
requires an understanding that there's only love and that you must be it. And that there's nothing you can do to be the love you are. Do you realize how beliefs have so many rules and regulations and they divide and subsect because no one ever agrees? That's why I said, you know, I've said it before jokingly, good old Elon Musk, you know, send a rocket ship up to Uranus and they set up a little colony of arseholes and it takes them a week and they'll be beating each other up. <laughs> and that's why they have the cryogenic sleep so that they don't beat each other up on the way there. Star Trek, you've heard me say this before. It must be saved from salvation. This is how we think. And these decisions are made unaware to keep him safely undisturbed apart from question, no self-inquiry, and from reason and from doubt, which is the path of self-inquiry. To whom do these thoughts appear? To whom? And then where are they coming from? They're not my thoughts. I don't have a single thought. I become aware of these thoughts, engage in them, and then I think they're my own. They're not. They're the, they're the thoughts in the dreaming mind of which I am a projection of one such thought. Like I've said before, Advita Vendanta says God is dreaming. If that was true, we would be truly fucked. And that's a holy word. We'd be trapped in dreaming forever. God is light. God is joy. God is the knowing of itself eternally. That extension of light is the sonship. One particle of light fell asleep. Why? It shows. It has free will. Every particle is a sun. Every particle has the self-same essence as the, as the holy creator. Supreme being is love. Every sun has free will. And one sun, one little shit, one little shit dreamt up this universe, decided to, let's imagine a separate universe. Let's imagine a special universe. Let me dream myself up as special. And the minute he fell asleep, forgot what he was. He wanted to be special, fell asleep, forgot, forgot he wanted to be special. And then went, oh shit, what's happening here? It's all dark. Help. And God said, return to me. Sees the light, forgotten what it is. So it sees the light, goes, oh shit, what's that? Boom, big bang. That is that which is. That is God's love, God's light returning, calling you to be the light you are because you are light. You're just asleep. You don't realize you've never left your father's kingdom. Heaven is chosen consciously. Decision. The choice cannot be made until alternatives are accurately seen and understood. Either God is one sick motherfucker dreaming up some horrific thing where he's created a, uh, beings and sent them to earth to die, then he only has one son, and then he sends that son to die for his sins, or the whole thing's one bullshit story, which isn't true, which Jesus awoke to and spoke it. Of course, they turned him into God and completely misinterpreted his teachings. I and my father are one, he says. What I can do, you can do, and greater things that I have done, you shall do. No, 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 we don't read that part. I seek mercy, not sacrifice. Enter, come to me, come to heaven like little children. Seek and he shall find. It means teaching us. Particle Son, the most important Sermon on the Mount, most important teaching. It's talking about the self that wandered off in a dream and the father's waiting to, to throw a feast when the son awakens to himself and realizes he's never left. So the choice cannot be made until alternatives are accurately seen and understood. The bullshit concepts of the world, religion, and all the theoretical spiritual nonsense constructs that you can breathe yourself awake, prana yourself awake, dance yourself awake, meditate yourself awake. Transcend through understanding. Beyond, and the love of God will transcend our understanding into the knowing of our being as our shared essence with God. We can't do it. We can't remember how we fell asleep. We can't remember what we are. We can prepare ourselves for it. We can stop the thoughts. What are thoughts? Ideas. And they're all based in fear, sin, and guilt. So how do we stop the thoughts from attacking us intensely? We forgive the world until we realize there's nothing to forgive. I dreamt it up. And then in the acceptance that there's nothing to forgive, the mind goes silent. Now we abide in silence. We invite the memory, Holy Spirit, the memory of God into our awareness. Abide in silence. The acceptance is what is. How can you accept what is? You're forgiven. So first movement, forgiveness. Second movement, acceptance. That acceptance turns to stillness, peace. And you prepare yourself through stillness for peace. And peace starts to bubble up. And as the self moves through itself, as itself, in your body-mind awareness, it becomes joy, the joyous light, the infinite joyous light of being. 
And as the infinite joyous light of being flows through you, inspiration comes. And then you'll be shown what to do. And then you act with passionate enthusiasm and intensity and share yourself knowingly with the world you've made, the world you've dreamt up, passionately becoming the light which saves the world, puts it away, dissolves it in the light of awareness, in the light of joy we are. The choice cannot be made until alternatives are accurately seen. And everything I'm telling you is a concession for the truth. Because if I was to share the truth with you, it would sound like this. All that is veiled in shadows must be raised in understanding to be judged again, seen anew, this time with heaven's help, with love's help. And all mistakes and judgment that the mind has made before are open to correction, seeing anew, as the truth dismisses them as causeless, they never happen. Now are they without effects. They cannot be concealed because their nothing is their nothingness is recognized. Clouds are illusions. The sky of awareness is made is made revealed. The conscious choice of heaven is as sure as is the ending of fear of hell, fear of separation, fear of loneliness, fear of disease, fear of death. When it is raised from its protective shield of unawareness and is brought to light, the light of awareness we are. Who can decide between the clearly seen and the unrecognized? Only he is awake. Yet who can fail to make a choice between alternatives when only one is seen as valuable, the other as a wholly, wholly worthless thing? but an imagined source of guilt and pain. Only an imagined source of guilt and pain and suffering can imagine the worthless and think it's real. Because that who knows itself as that in which all takes place, because in that which all takes place is our shared essence with God, which is that which is. That's what awakens. But when one is asleep, believing you're a source of guilt and pain, you only see the worthless and make it real for you. Who hesitates? Make a choice like this. And shall we hesitate to choose this today? We make the choice for heaven. We make the choice to be ourself knowingly, the self, shared self with God, the self which we have called Christ because it's the anointed awakened son. We, the choice for heaven is we awake and spend five minutes making sure that we have made the one decision that is sane. Now, how do you do that? You say, I choose to be myself knowingly. And then you immediately move into silence. Don't try and remember yourself. You can't. You can't remember yourself with the mind that fell asleep. And you abide in silent stillness. And you offer gratitude for the silent stillness, which is the essence of what we are. And the Holy Spirit, which is the voice of God in our dream, which is the memory of God within us, corrects all our illusions and brings awareness into itself aware. We recognize we have, we make a conscious choice between what has existence and what has nothing, but an appearance of the truth appearance of people, places, things, and events. It's pseudo being brought to what is real is flimsy and transparent in the light of awareness. It holds no terror now for what was made enormous, vengeful, pitiless with hate, demands obscurity for fear to be invested here, invested there. Now it is recognized as but a foolish, trivial mistake, a dream within a dream that never happened in God's true reality, which is the only reality there is. Before we close our eyes to, in sleep tonight, we reaffirm the choice that we have made each hour in between. And now we give the gift. We give at the, sorry. And now we give it's a gift. Yeah. Give the last five minutes of our waking day to the decision with which we woke. Go to that prayer. The last prayer, this holy instant I give to you, to you in terms that I may follow you certain that in your direction inwards, I will know peace. 
And now we give five, we give the last five minutes of our waking day to the decision with which we awoke. Every hour past, we have declared our choice again in brief, in a brief quiet time devoted to maintaining sanity, stillness. And finally, we close the day with this acknowledging we choose, but what we want. Heaven is a decision I must make. You see, first the kingdom, and all else will be given you. I make it now. Everything's always now. And will not change my mind because my mind is that which is the Christ mind, lit by the infinite light of awareness. Because it's the only thing I want. I want the kingdom of heaven first and foremost. I want to know myself as the self-same self, which is the extension of God's love. This is my this is my only desire left in this world. Everything else is just the passing of time. I will dedicate time. I will use the illusion of time to spend silent stillness and abide in God. Where I allow the essence of self to come into my awareness. Pour through me as the peace flows. The peace flows and becomes joy. The joy flows as my passionate self pours through this temporal body-mind device and becomes the light of the world, which pours itself enthusiastically, into, which we call creativity, into all that I am and do. Be here now. Be as you are. Be as you were created to be. The love, the light, the joy, which is the kingdom of heaven. Be you that. Now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining me. Hope this has brought clarity that will transcend this body-mind illusion into the reality of being ourselves knowingly. Amen. Thanks for joining me.